Hi, Lee Fursith, Headwater Science Center, Bemidji, Minnesota, where we are open seven days a week, 9.30 to 5 o'clock, Monday through Saturday. And on Sundays, we're open from 1 to 5. We do reading to Orion every single Wednesday, and we do it at 3.30. So that tells you, right now it's 3.30 on a Wednesday when we are about to read to Orion. We, I'm going to read to Orion. Ryan is on the other side of the camera, so the two of us are going at it creating this show for you. And this will be the book, Two Tall Houses. All right, why am I reading you this book? Because the one I really want to read to you is that book. This one's coming. There will be two books today. I want to read it to you because Orion asks for books about rabbits. That's what he asks for. And I don't always read books about rabbits. But I frequently go hunting for books he would really enjoy. I'm going to tell you he's going to have a major issue with this book, meaning he's going to disagree. Yes, it has a rabbit in it. Isn't that fantastic? The problem is it has an owl in it. And the suggestion in this book is that these two are good friends. Two good friends, a rabbit and an owl. We have an owl. He's right behind Ryan. And he might even give out a couple of hoots before this show is over. And I'm going to guarantee you that that owl and Orion are not good friends. Nor would they be good friends in the wild. All right. Here we go. Two tall houses. Orion, here we come. I've already guaranteed you. I don't think he's going to enjoy the story very much. I'll turn him a little bit, maybe, so he can get the next one, too. Here we go. Rabbit and Owl lived and lived in two small houses on the top of a hill. There they are. Rabbit liked to grow vegetables in the sun, and Owl enjoyed his view of the forest. Brian, what uh, species do you think that owl is? Um, let's see. I mean, he's got the tufts on top like the great horned owls do. Yeah. Is that exactly the right color? Well, they can come in a lot of different colors, though. Huh? That's the thing. We All talked right. about that a little bit in one of the shows where our, our taxidermy great horned owl that we have is white, but owls will all be gray. That's, that's true. That's normal for them. Yeah. The face is right. Mm -hmm. That circular face. In the evening, they played... Under the twilight sky, they were good neighbors and good friends. What do you think? All right. Good neighbors, good friends. Until one day. Owl, I mean, sorry. Rabbit, owl complained. Your garden is growing too salt tall. I can no longer see the forest. But what can I do about that, replied the rabbit. I have to grow my food. So Owl began to build his house taller. Rabbit watched and chittered his teeth. Owl, look what you did. The house is blocking the sun from reaching my garden. But I have to see the forest, said Owl. So Rabbit built his house taller too, and in fact planted vegetables right there on the roof. But when Rabbit watered, his rooftop plants. It made Owl very angry. So Owl built his house even taller. I want to be taller, yelled Rabbit. I'm sorry, I want to be the tallest, yelled Rabbit. I guess you can see the problem. What? screeched the owl. I thought that was funny when I read this to myself, because maybe he is a screech owl. You are so far below me that I can't even hear you. I'd say that's, uh, we're getting into kind of the bullying action here. I can't even hear you, he says. It's also funny to have an owl say what instead of who. Aha, <laughs> very good. <laughs> So, Rabbit built his house even taller and put a fence around his garden. Who, who, who do you think you are, screeched Owl. Wow. Like nice timing. <laughs> nice timing. And he went to find more twigs for his house. And Rabbit went to fetch more soil for his house.
and soon they had the two tallest houses in the entire world. I love the perspective, right? We could turn the whole book. We can tell where they are. Maybe that's a hint of what type of owl we're looking at. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell? I would put this uh, Nevada or Arizona. It looks like they're in Europe. Wow. Because I think that's Canada, like at the bottom. <laughs> Ryan's looking at the map here. Yeah, I think this yeah. is Canada. Like all this stuff. I don't know. Maybe it's just not really anything real. <laughs> wow. They might have made up a new map for us. Yeah, that's nothing. Because <laughs> that could tell us what type of owl it is if we can figure out where they are. <laughs> oh, I can't carry water up my ladder, cried Rabbit. And I can't see the forest anyway, said Owl. Way up high, the wind roared and bellowed. Whoosh, creak. And blew the two tall houses into the air. Crack, whoosh. Hold on, rabbit, cried Owl. They landed with a plunk. All I have left is a pile of dirt, moaned Rabbit. My house is a bunch of broken twigs, sighed Owl. Alone they had nothing. How about size? Screech owls are pretty little. Um, I was looking at that too. The owl, their, their relative size has changed a little bit over the course of the book. The owl was bigger than the rabbit a couple pages ago, and now it's kind of the same size. I've been on that already. I've been looking at it. Right. But together, they had all they needed. to build one small house. Now they're moving in together. Resolve those issues. Yeah, Screech Owl is probably about the size of a rabbit. <laughs> Maybe we got a Screech Owl. All right, why did I read that book? I just wanted to see his reaction. I'm not seeing a lot of interest. All right, by special request, The Iridescence of Birds. The Iridescence of Birds is really a book it is meant to be a tribute to this famous artist who's going to come out in the story. And so this book really wanted to talk about Henry Matisse. If you were a boy named Henry Matisse who lived in a dreary town in northern France where skies were gray, And the days were cold, and you wanted color and light and sun. And your mother, to brighten your days, painted plates and hung them on the walls. With pictures of meadows and trees, rivers and birds, that's the plates, painting plates so they can hang on the wall. And she let you mix the colors of paint. Yellow and red. Red and blue. Blue and yellow. And let you arrange the fruit and flowers she brought home from the market. Pears and oranges in bowls on the tablecloth and flowers in blue vases. And in the town, people wore silks with colors. Ryan, you been to France? Nope. Neither have I. But I know two people in my family who have, and they talked about the scarves. Lots of people wearing scarves in France. Oh, yeah. Gotta have Anne. Around. Yeah. Pretty regularly, I think. Okay. Yeah. All tangled, one color, next to the other, next to the other. And your mother put red rugs on the walls of the house. And on the dirt parlor floor, so all the world look red. 
and you raise pigeons, watching their sharp eyes and their red feet, and their colors that changed with the light as they moved, that your mother called iridescence, would it, would it be a surprise that you grew up to be a fine painter who painted red rooms and flowers that danced on green stems and fruit in a bowl on a blue and white tablecloth? Would it be a surprise that you became a fine painter who painted light and movement? and the iridescence of birds. All of this page, one I won't read to you, but you can read to yourself as soon as I get it back to the library, talks about my, love, my Mother Loved Everything I Did by Henry Matisse. You could read all of that. All right, so the reason I talked about color today is because we have a special event coming up, right, Ryan? Mm -hmm. A class that's coming up that involves painting. I know you don't get to be on this side of the camera, but what's coming up? Yeah, so uh... so this is an event that we did um, a few months ago. I think we did it in October was the last time, where uh, Carl, one of our educators, who oftentimes is in these shows, uh, we do 3D printed prehistoric animals, so we call these prehistoric painting nights. And so like last time we painted a, uh, a 3D printed Spinosaurus, um, this time around, it's going to be different types of trilobite are the things that we have to paint. And so this Friday, I'm for my stream, I'm probably going to be doing some painting of a model trilobite. So Carl asked me to make example ones for people because um, he likes me doing it because I'm bad at it. And he doesn't want he wants people to uh, have something to make them feel good when they uh, don't do a great job. They can uh, look at mine he, and feel better. Yeah, I think he just wants them to know that that class is for everybody. So yeah. not just artists. In fact, maybe you should be far more interested in the science side than the art yeah. side. Yeah. But yeah, and so we're talking about trilobites this time around. And trilobites are interesting, particularly because of the idea of iridescence, where it's a an aspect where your color is not coming necessarily from just pigments inside whatever you're talking about, hair, skin, shell, whatever, but kind of the physical structure of them. So we're going to talk a little bit about different ways that animals can have color in them besides just making a pigment that's a color. And so that's probably going to be the gist of it on Friday. It might be kind of a long one because, like I said, I'm going to be painting while I'm doing it. So that's All the right. plan for Friday. All right. What's the date on this? Do we have a date set for the painting night? I don't know the date. So now you, um, Ryan's got more homework to do. He's going to find out the date yeah. by this Friday. And for all of you who are just interested, you're going, wait a minute. So what are you doing on Friday? You're going to paint something as a part of the show. Plus, you're going to explain this whole word, iridescence. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And the answer would be yes to that. Sounds great. All right. So. Now you know about a class that's coming up that Carl's going to teach. You know that the 3.30 show on Friday is going to feature Ryan and Iridescence. And we're going to sign off. Thanks a lot for tuning in today. All right, why don't you say goodbye? Here's what he's saying to you. I really like that second book. I like talking about colors. I dislike that first book. First of all, I don't even want to be thinking about an owl and a rabbit who become best friends. He just thinks that's entirely ridiculous. There he goes. <laughs>